Chaos is a ladder, Bruce is my drunk uncle, and I don't know about you, but I'm feeling Survivor 45 enough to grab the earth by my toes and dig deep. Internet, is that a Jeff Probst prayer candle in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Because let me tell you, I am as happy as a Sifu punching a tree to talk about this season of Survivor. These first three episodes have been fun, and the show is using its 90 minutes as if it were always this way. And low key, I kinda dread the day that we go back to a basic 60. Hey Jeff, can we just like have 90 minutes forever? Is that... Is that too much to ask? But I digress. I am loving what these players are doing on the island this season, and let's talk about them. Let's talk about who we think is going to win Survivor 45. For those who are new to this video series, every season after about the third episode or so, I like to sit back, assess the game thus far, and try my best to analyze who should be the top four picks to be the next sole survivor? I call it the true contenders because while technically anyone on any season can win, I mean, you know, peep two seasons ago, most of the time there are only a few players who stand out above the rest who really are vying for the title. Everyone's a contender, but these are the true ones. Or at least from my perspective. And half the time I'm wrong, which is the fun part. Yeah, I could be just completely overthinking this, but this is the kind of game where you do feel Feel like you have to overthink things. Before I get to my picks, I want to know from you who your top four contenders are to win. The four players, after just three episodes, who you think are most likely to be the one to take the crown. And let me know before you hear my picks. For my first pick, I am swinging for the fences. I am picking a player that I never thought I would have this high after the premiere. A player who has shocked me to my core, and if I have ever learned anything from underestimating someone's chances in the first episode of a season, let it be known I am now rectifying that as I have a Lulu Lemon, a Lulu loser, and perhaps soon to be a Lulu Soul Survivor. I have Emily as a true contender to win Survivor 45. Just a few weeks ago, the first video I made about this season, I said that you could call me to Lulu, and you know, I still stand by that, but Everything I have seen from Emily after the first episode has inspired me to think outside the box. I had her pegged as potentially the first boot, or at best a pre-merger, but since her recovery in episode 2 as she connected with Caleb and then her domination of the tribe, the domination once she ousted Sabaya alongside Caleb in episode 3, I am left shook and in awe, bartering her shot in the dark to gain a little bit of trust Emily is the player you underestimate socially and think, no way, no, no way is she gonna flip the vote and get the numbers. No way she is gonna go far in the game and have a case to win. No way she is gonna get the jury votes. Am I, am I wrong? Am I making up fan fiction? Emily having the ability to recover so well after stumbling so hard in the first few days tells me everything I needed to know. She absolutely has the ability to adapt and reintegrate and change gears. She has the ability to survive outside of her comfort zone and listen and provide sound tactical judgment to get ahead. And I think she has a case to win. And she is my first true contender. If I'm not gonna win the game, I would rather be the first person voted off. It's a complete waste of time if you're not the sole survivor. Excuse me for being honest. As for my second contender, let's leave the Lulu tribe for now and talk about the tribes who are, you know, actually winning challenges and surviving the early game. Look, I love Amat Singh as much as the next person, but sometimes, most likely, the winner is from a dominant tribe. And so, I gotta ask. Has anyone noticed just how many attorneys are on this cast? We've got Mama Julie, we've got Boston Jake, and we've got... Oh, a look at that. It's, uh, it's my second contender who is just hiding her attorney status. It's Katura. Katura is totally one-upping Jake with that little storyline, and I hope it pays off down the line because she stole the premiere episode Battle of Wits from under Jake's nose. Just being that clever, that shrewd, that private in an era of Survivor where it feels like everyone is anything but, that should do wonders. Information is currency, gossip spreads quickly, and Katura gets that. She wants to be underestimated estimated, and I wouldn't be shocked if that's happening in these early days. She's got a decent Libra Virgo alliance with the women, which, uh, full disclosure, I, I don't know how to read that at all. Is it like edgic but with the stars? But 
then she's also got that heat-seeking missile and a one-sided feud with Bruce, and I kinda love it. I know some may say, and I would agree, it's a little bit tunnel vision, but it fleshes out her character more, and it gives us an early story to follow. Because let me tell you, this would not be the first winner to have an early game rivalry go the distance if they both manage to survive. And if I'm reading the stars correctly here, I think she's got a leg up on old Brucey, and there's a storm heading his way. I'm also now realizing what she has in common with my other contender, Emily, which means that if you've got a bone to pick with Bruce, your odds of winning dramatically increase. Is the first challenge of 44 my next contender? Katura floats somewhere in the middle of my threat level gauge right now, and if she's able to just keep her head low and her wits sharp, I think she could get to the pointy end and make a run for it. I can't tell that I'm a lawyer. I can't tell that I'm strategic until I can like show my true colors and start slicing through. So what's it like being a lawyer? Scary. And so we've got pick number three, and if you know me, you know that I usually have a system in place for how my contenders tend to shake out. You've got the front runner, you've got the social threat, you got the strong early duo, and maybe you've got a dark horse. So, surprise, surprise, this next pick is gonna fall into at least one of those categories, potentially three actually, and that's a player from the Red Tribe. Yeah, uh, so far, one player from each tribe. I personally think there's a lot of different ways to slice this red tribe, and I currently think they are the strongest tribe with the most winning potential. Half of them are currently in my top six to win, which can't be said for both blue and yellow, but this one, this next pick, is in my top four, and that is D. I don't know, I guess just like the big toe did a number on me and colored me impressed. D flew under my radar in the premiere episode, but as soon as she got her own chance to just rip up the flora and then get into a solid core four alliance alongside Austin, Drew, and Julie, I began to notice she is playing a smart game. First, she caught Sifu looking for the idol. She wanted to unload on him, but she told us she knows better. She's smarter than that. Second, she has got a strong duo partner in Julie who truly values her loyalty as that's what we're hearing is gonna be Dee's game. Accruing a good amount of loyalty early on with the right set of people can do wonders for anyone's game on any of these shows. And third, she was able to get the upper hand on both Drew and Austin who got caught lying to her at the idol. She sussed them out and she kept it to herself. She didn't tip them off, she just rolled with it and even solidified her trust with them by handing them back that hammer. Wait, was that the same hammer Erica used? Is that hammer infused with the thunder of a million dollars? Either way, breadcrumbs are being dropped to tip us off to the fact that Dee is gonna play her ass off and so far, she's done a great job. Great position, loyal allies, and a big toe to foreshadow her winning that toe grabbing stacking challenge in the post merge. Calling it now. Only one more remain to claim the million dollar prize. I was made for this, and I'm gonna play like this is the only chance, and it is the only chance. Woo, let's go! And last, but not least, my final contender to join the ranks of these esteemed women is none other than the dark horse pick of the lot. For the record, if you're wondering who got number five and six, I considered including Kelly from the Blue Tribe and Austin from the Red Tribe, but, Ultimately, I have gone deeper than that and included the second half of a pair. I hope find success, and that is Dee's other half. It's Julie, the attorney, also on the Red Tribe. Julie is my fourth contender and my Dark Horse pick to win, and really, if nothing else, she's giving me Heather from 41 Upside and is just everything that I wish Heather should have had when it comes to screen time. Just like Katara, Julie is hiding a profession, and I suspect if she gets far enough, intends to whip that out to amaze a jury as an ace up her sleeve. Because the mother archetype doesn't tend to win, though they do go far, but Julie has her mittens all over the Red Tribe and was the first to rope in Drew as well as Dee and Austin to form that core power group. And hey, you know, okay, I've been here before, maybe she is my Lindsay from 43 and she's gone next episode, the, uh, the day of this video releasing, but I hope not. Julie is playing to be overlooked, to earn everyone's loyalty early so she can protect herself when she inevitably goes deep. And right now, from what I've seen, I trust her instincts and her game sense. She is wise, she is smart, and I think that she is gonna be underestimated, which, by the way, is a core tenet of how I pick my contenders. And you know, when I take stock of this cast, 
fast. I would say she's actually one of the faster players this season, believe it or not, at least as far as strategy goes, and she's done a great job insulating herself. I just hope the swap doesn't screw it all up. I've taken on the role of mama. I am Mama J. I feel like they don't need to know I'm an attorney. Who wants to give a million dollars to an attorney? And those are my true contenders for Survivor 45. Emily, Katura, D, and Julie. All ladies, but am I wrong? Money says 50-50, but you know what? Let me know who your contenders are. If you have the same as mine, how you're feeling about my picks, and more importantly, how you're feeling about this season of Survivor thus far. I think that this season has had an extraordinarily strong start, and I can only hope that it keeps up the pace between now and the end of the year. Truly, I am really enjoying this. A big thank you to my patrons for obviously being the truest contenders of them all. I don't need to make a video to say that. You all know that. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to play your idol in the 10 minutes you've got it in your pocket before you let three other people, three other strangers decide your fate. And I will see you in the next one. Once I brainstorm all the different ways the producers can hide idols in the future. Perhaps the podium, the snuffer. You know what? Just put it on a necklace, hang it around Jeff's neck. Can I play it? I want to play that. You want to play this? Yeah, can I play that? I want to play that. If that is an idol, it would be historic. Yeah. That is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Adam will not count. Second person voted out of Survivor Gabon. Jillian, the tribe has spoken. Oh, no.